Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to be taking a look at how you can use the range selection tool to create fades for your audio events. So this is one of those things which may not be immediately apparent and you might not discover it organically as it were, but once you know about it, it's a real time saver in the right situation. So here I've got a recording where all the audio events are starting at the right time, but I want to put fade ins at the beginning of all of these tracks just to make sure there's no clicks, etc. I would obviously refine these start points later on, but this is just an early part of the process to make sure if somebody wants a rough mix or whatever, there's nothing weird happening. It's quite common when you've been sent stems as well. You might think, well, I'll just highlight all these tracks and then put my fade on, which yeah, you can do, but the problem with that is you might have hundreds of tracks and then it's a pain. And you then you think, well, I'll just do Control A or Command A and select all. But the problem with that is then you've selected all the events and there might be something later on that you're then applying a fade on that you don't want. So this is a way to make sure that that fade only happens at the right place. First thing to do is to pick the range selection tool two, which not everybody uses that much, but it does have its uses. The next thing to do is you need keyboard shortcut to change the way that this is working. So you hold down Command and Shift on Mac or Control Shift on Windows, and then you click and drag your range selection. So I'm gonna zoom in a bit so we can see this a little bit more clearly. And the important thing is that your range selection starts before the audio event happens and then goes up to where you want the fades to be. So I'm gonna start here and hold down those keys and then click and drag until I get to the right place. So now I'm in the right place going to let go of all that. I've got my selection and all I need to do is hit A to apply the fade. There we go. If you do that at the end of an event, it will do the same kind of thing as well. It will apply a fade out. So as long as you are starting before the beginning or ending after the end, then that's what you'll get. And there you go. You can see those have all been applied quickly. Even if we had 500 tracks, job done, and then we can start refining. That's one use of this. Now, the other use of this, which I find particularly useful when I've got multiple tracks to deal with, is applying fade-ins and fade-outs simultaneously. So here we've got some backing vocals, and we're just going to click there. There we go. It's going to select around there. And what I want to do is I want to have my fade-in finishing at this point, and I want my fade-out to start there to tighten these up, even though the timing of them in terms of the beginning and the ends of all the audio isn't exactly where you might want it. But in this case, it's where I do want it. And it's not always the same because this particular performer is a bit loose in terms of their timing and that's what they want to retain. So what we're going to do is use the range selection tool again. This time I'm not holding down any keys. I'm just going to click and then drag to pick the tracks I want. I don't want to do it across all the tracks. I just want to do it across these. And then once I'm in the right place, which I am there, I'm going to hit A, and this time you'll see there will be fades put in at the beginning and at the end. And importantly, this one, which starts earlier than the others, will still fade up to maximum at the right time. So I hit A, and there we go. It's much quicker than doing it manually, particularly if you've got multiple tracks to do. And most importantly, if we zoom in at this point here, you can see that they all reach maximum at the same time, which is what we want. And then if I want to edit them further, I can do, and they will all stay as far as the end, that that point is all synchronized perfectly. So I get a nice synchronized edit where it's all working and those fades are all perfectly in time with each other. So that's a much quicker way in certain situations to create fade ins, fade outs, and fade in and fade outs at the same time, particularly when working with edits like this. And while it won't work for every situation, it's certainly much faster in the situations that it applies for. So as ever, I hope you found that useful and we'll see you again soon for more Music Tech Tuition.